What's happening, guys? All right, today is Tuesday, the 9th of April. All right, we are southbound to uh, Interstate 215 right now in San Bernardino, California. And it is time to pick up our reload at the Colton uh, Walmart Distribution Center. Yeah, I talked about that at the end of the last video. So you guys probably already have an awareness of that. So I'll assume, and you guys know how much I'm there. So I would say more than likely for watching this at all, past a couple minutes in, you're probably more interested in the story time. So, um, all right, yeah, we'll get to that in a second though. All right, so you guys, to recap, we picked, uh, we delivered uh, last night in Ontario at Ventura Foods. And I went home and did a 10 hour break. And now we're coming back over here to Colton to pick up a reload. Uh, talk about, talk later on in the video where this one's going. Uh, all right, we're getting on westbound Interstate 10 right now, by the way. And uh, now I am starting this video a little bit later than normal. Yeah, because that, it's going to be kind of shorter story time, uh, pro hopefully, and then. I tend to have more time spent, uh, more video time actually in Walmart's facility than I do at most customers too. So, I'm trying to consider that too. Anyway, um, so here's what we talked about today, right? Uh, just you know, this is a, there was an incident that happened in late February. I remember hearing about it, but I didn't know the details on it really much. Uh, I just know some woman crashed in late February and they didn't find her um, yeah, she ended up dying and they didn't find her body until a month later at the end of March so uh, did she die from her injuries or did she die from exposure I don't know um, that's what I'm kind of curious about but anyway the incident happened uh, well it was believed to be somewhere in the area of Blythe California, which is right by the California and, uh, California and Arizona border along Interstate 10. Um, so I think the incident was on February 27th. And the woman called 911 herself. You know, the driver of the car called 911 herself to report the accident. And um, said she fell asleep behind the wheel. And, you know, um, well, anyway, the, she, she didn't know where she was at, so the, the dispatcher basically gave her instructions on how to go on Google Maps and uh, locate her lap long coordinates. So I guess she does that and then gives the dispatcher information. Uh, but, you know, and then they sent a, a, a blight CHP uh, unit over there, couldn't find her, so I opened up a wider search. Uh, they also got the Winter Haven CHP office, which is right on the California, on, on, the, on the other side of the river from Yuma, Arizona, uh, real close to the Mexican border also. Um, they were looking for her too, they couldn't find her, I guess they spent like five hours trying to find her and couldn't. So, I beg the question, well how do you, I mean if she had a crash and she told you her lat long coordinates, how do you not know where she's at? And uh, yeah, I, yeah, that was a good question. Uh, let me get this. Uh, we'll get through this red light here. All right. Um, so anyway, yeah, they did a ground search first, and then they which one was it? I think uh, border border division, which is okay. So border uh, division and CHP actually have oversees uh, several different uh, actual substations. So. Like Blythe and uh, Winter Haven will both be like border division. Um, I'm not sure what other ones are over there. So like I say Barstow. Yeah, Barstow is a CHP division. That Barstow has a division as well as a substation. So they'll have like Barstow, Victorville, Morongo Basin, or Morongo Valley, whatever you call that station. Um, who else? Can't remember if there are any other stations in that same division, but. Yeah, they oversee multiple stations. Well, anyway, 
Yeah, they dispatched an aircraft to look for her. Couldn't find her. So, you know, and then they end up calling off a search because they just can't find her. About a month later, none other than a YouTube true crime sleuth ends up, uh, I guess, uh, theorizing that maybe the, the correct info was there all along, but maybe there was an issue with... Uh, with a dispatcher writing down the lat long coordinates in decimal form instead of um, yeah, hours, minutes, seconds. I had no idea this uh, it could even be uh, this big an issue there, but apparently it is. Because um, ultimately, I guess the, the decimal coordinates ended up putting them on uh, putting her like on uh, Highway 95, right by the California border. But I guess her actual position, or, or maybe, uh, or I'm, I'm kind of confused on that. Maybe they searched the mountainous area. Yeah, or, yeah, I'll make this turn real quick. All right, anyway, I, I was kind of mixed up on what was what. Uh, I guess the lat long coordinates, maybe they'd gone to this kind of remote mountainous area that doesn't even have roads. And, um... Uh, yeah, and then I guess this guy, this YouTube true, true crimer, found, uh, yeah, figured out, uh, you know, from, uh, he made a suspicion that, uh, you know, based on that information there, with uh, possibly a little fatal flaw by the dispatcher, I guess. Um, and I guess he did some, uh, some kind of conversion, whatever. And they ended up searching another, uh, the other location that the YouTuber suggested. And ended up finding her dead. And her, her body was like 16 miles away from where they originally were looking. So yeah, they and uh, yeah, it seemed like she was at, at, around uh, US 95, I think, or Arizona 95. I'm not really sure, but it sounded like it was on the Arizona side. Um. Yeah, this might come in handy for you guys too. Like I said, I've, I talk about this a lot uh, before. Uh, like when I, whenever I would train people, I'd always make sure they know, always know where you're at. Even something simple as, uh, you know, like my truck only has a trip meter and a leg meter. So what I'll usually do is the leg meter, I'll synchronize the leg meter to a mile post. So like to say mile marker zero, if I'm heading eastbound, then uh, the, the, the leg meter should always correspond with what mile marker I'm at. Uh, now there are, there, there is a calibration error issue there though, where over time it will kind of deviate by um, half a mile, a mile off, whatever, over a course of 50, 100 miles, whatever it is, but, and it varies from vehicle to vehicle. Even with the same vehicle, you can have, uh, you know, yeah, like brand new tires, you might end up having more uh, accurate results and then as the tires wear, uh, the vehicle will think it's traveling a further distance than it actually is. So, um, yeah, and I've had to report incidents before and sometimes they do happen in places you're not familiar with and even more so when it's dark and sometimes mile posts are missing or other stuff like that and then like, well, how do you if you have a crash or you witness something, how the hell are you going to tell a dispatcher where to find you? Where to send the units to if you have no idea? Now, CHP, uh, they have a capability to geolocate where the phone is actually making the call from. But even then, if it's using, uh, if it's, if it's using um, cell towers, because what will usually happen is it will, your, your, your phone might ping like a few different towers and they'll know that you're in a certain area it's kind of like a Venn diagram kind of thing there and you know or if I, okay if you're picking up if you're connecting if your phone's communicating with this tower here then you're within a certain range of it another one is a certain range another one's a certain range and wherever they intersect is roughly where they uh, where they can assume you, you're probably at um, but then uh, you know the the more, the greater the intersection point is, the the larger the area is that you can possibly be in. So that's something to consider there. Um, even if they do geolocate, it's I don't know, it's it's not necessarily by satellite. Um, 
you know, and uh, they, they could give you, could, uh, tell them uh, only just kind of the general ballpark where you're at, but not still not be accurate enough. All right, um, we are. this is Miguel Bustamante Parkway. We're going to make the right turn here into the Walmart DC, this um, third driveway up. Uh, my pickup, my load doesn't pick up until 1600. However, uh, I got a, I got a message from dispatch earlier saying it's already ready for pickup. Uh, but around 11 o'clock this morning, I got the got the message saying it was ready. So decided to leave as soon as my 10-hour break was up and get over here. All right. So as a reminder. Use both of these lanes. Did you see the Sea of England Bob Teller there? It went on the other side. This is all one way right here. The dedicated, the dedicated fleet guys go on the left side of the guard shack, and uh, OTR guys come on the right side. All right, guys, we checked in. Now it's time to go drop our empty. Um, all right, we're going to drop it in rows E or F. That's uh, the row where the, the on-site scale is at. Uh, I'm gonna prefer F because I have a load lock still in the back that I want that I need to retrieve. And row E, while where the scale indicator is at, um, it, it kind of has an embankment that goes down from where the back of the trailer is at, so I won't be able to get in the probably won't be able to get into the trailer if I use that side. So hopefully. Hopefully we'll find one, uh, a spot in row F. All right, looks like we got a, a contractor pulling a JCT over here. Marlo Trucking. I don't know that I've seen that guy before. Now we have a number of contractors who pull our trailers. Uh, some of them are regulars. Now, uh, yeah, I see them all the time, but uh, that one, I, I don't really, yeah, I don't know that I've seen him. I might have. Just not super familiar to me. Alright, there's another GCT driver up there. Okay, right over here. Yeah, I like there's an opening right over here. Yeah, actually a few different spots, so. Um, let me see if I can get in over here before, um, before Covenant gets over here to scale. swim far enough. As long as I can get inside to get my load lock where I'll be happy. Let's uh, good to go. Now we'll go ahead and Bob tell over to the shipping office. Looks like L5204 is trying to dock in over here to live load. Let me get by this guy because he was just walking toward his truck. And get by before he actually starts backing. Like, I, yeah, I just saw him walking from the back of his trailer back toward his truck. So it's like a oh, perfect time to move there. 
Again, that's why I say don't block the road. Um, don't don't block the lane if you don't need to either. All right, no other vehicles coming. Okay, we're gonna come up over by this uh, Walmart drop trailer in front of us and park right there temporarily. Someone have a mishap here or something? I just saw an, uh, an amber reflector there. You know, like, uh, like someone's light lens or something got hit. Alright guys, go find our empty, our loaded trailer now. Uh, we're gonna be looking for 6569. It should be in either rows G or uh, row G and H. Probably an H. Alright. Yeah, nobody coming. I was gonna let the shag driver go by, but he waved me on by. Got a little squirrely bomb telling over them grates there. <laughs> okay, yeah, this row right in front of us is almost certainly where it's going to be. As if it's been ready to go for as long as it's been, I seriously doubt it's in the dock door. Oh, that's right next to the other guy. All right. That guy looks like he's uh, maybe waiting for a dock door or something. Pulling a JCT trailer, <laughs> even though it'll be kind of short-lived, I'm sure. All right, uh, let me get this pre-trip done and get ready to roll. And uh, we're definitely going to want to scale it because it's heavy. I'll get more on that in a second. All right, guys, remember I talked about not trusting a mechanic's work? Well, here's an example of it. Overall, this trailer looks like it's in pretty good shape. However, that's the auto inflate shutoff valve there. It is in the closed position. Why would it be in a closed position? Either someone, or either a driver was trying to hide a leak, not so likely, but it's possible, or a mechanic closed it to do some kind of work. And there are a bunch of new tires on this trailer here, so I would say pretty good chance when the trailer tires got replaced, the person uh, who did the work probably did not open the valve back up. Now, I don't have air going to the trailer right now yet, so I haven't gotten to that part of the inspection. And this is why I like to look, um, especially on the JCT trailers. Because JCT trailers, the airbags do not auto deflate like the Hirschbach trailers do. Now, that's a concern there though. This one here looks like it might be deflated there. So if, um, if we don't have auto deflating airbags here, and that one looks deflated, that one looks like it might be a little deflated too. It's hard to tell, but the bottom of, the bottom of it kind of gives a clue. Um, I would say there's a pretty good chance there's a leak somewhere. Um, that it, or it's, it's either venting out from another system that's um, basically causing the air and the airbags to back feed into whatever it is that's leaking, or there's a leaky back. So. And that's one of the things I, prefer, I like about having this kind of a trailer design where the bags do not auto deflate because they're not supposed to deflate and I see that they're deflated gives me more reason to be suspicious that there's something going on there and I start taking an even closer look than I normally do. So, I mean, I'm not saying I don't look close at, at all, but uh, you know, it's going to instantly catch my attention. I might start digging around more uh, for that kind of problem. So, something I'll have to keep an eye on there.
All right, guys, we're done pre-tripping. Now we'll go ahead and uh, do a scale our load. Because it is a 41,000 pound load. And I know for certain uh, Cajon Pass way station is open. Or at least it was when I passed through there. I passed by there on the way down here. So, well, I guess that guy wanted to back his trailer into the spot that I was pulling out of. But there are other spots open here. Why not just drop it in another spot? You're not supposed to be dropping your empty in that area anyway. Unless you're sitting there to wait for a dock door. Delta 4470. That sounds vaguely familiar. Okay, now I can hear air still coming through. Uh, and it does concern me a little bit for the scaling because if I don't have my airbags totally inflated, um, there's a possibility I'm going to get um, inaccurate scale readings. And, and in general, also, when you're scaling at a shipper, general rule of thumb is don't trust the scale. Assume that it's probably wrong, but I know from experience coming to this place many, 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 many times that their scale is almost always uh, really, really close to where it's supposed to be. So I know I can uh, pretty well trust this one. Yeah, see, I still hear air coming through. Alright, 11,440. Okay, so we're looking for no more than 45,440 with the drives on there. Man, I might need to slide the tenants forward again. Yeah, that's actually a little heavy on the front end there. 45,780. That's about 340 pounds overweight, so... And I did actually slide the tandems uh, to the California hole. Whoever dropped it had it is all the way forward, which I'm not a fan of doing. Okay. Let's go ahead and... 77,640. Okay, so tandems are good. But I'm overweight on the drive, so I'm going to go ahead and come over here, over off to the side, and we'll slide the tandems forward uh, two more holes. To, uh, I don't want it any further forward than I really have to pass the 40-foot mark. Uh, personally, I mean, other people prefer it all the way, all the way forward, no matter what. I don't like it all the way forward because that's more tail swing, and more tail swing means more risk of backing into stuff that you don't want to back into. So. Go ahead and fix that up. I always wonder how many people uh, see my... Why am I still rolling? Oh, that's, uh, I'm rolling the wrong way, that's why. That's, that's kind of stupid me there. There we go. Yeah, anyway, I was trying to say, I wonder how time, uh, when I start moving my truck sometimes and my side box door is still open, how many people think I'm just being an idiot? <laughs> All right, let's take another go with this. Oops, kind of helps when I release my brakes, so. Well, at least I know the trailer brakes work fine. I just did a TED test on them. And I bet you this guy's going to drop his trailer in row E because he just came in from the guard shack. You know, it's, it's hissing out again, and I'm wondering, I gotta, well, I'm gonna check it out when I get to the guard shack, or after I, you know, when I'm sending my departure info after I get out of here. Um, I'm wanting to know if it's just the leveling valve that's pissing all my ear out, or if there's something else going on there. Yeah, it's 
guy is definitely setting up to back. I'm gonna need time to get my. Uh, I want to give uh, give time to get my airbags aired up anyway. Yeah, it looks like you might steer a little too much. As best I can tell, I don't think the trailer needs to rotate that rapidly. It's, I mean, it does need to rotate, but I think it's rotating a little too fast and uh, his putting way too much steering in for too long on that first part. Yeah, see what I mean? You had to pull forward to correct it. Straighten it out. There you go. Straighten your steers. Don't steer more. Let the trailer do its own work. Now, don't try to chase it too early either. I can tell he's, he doesn't have a good angle there and his trying to chase the trailer down is not going to help that. So I mean, just steer straight. You just steer straight and let the trailer do its own damn work. You won't have so much difficulty getting it into there. What's this guy doing now? Is he giving up and going for a different spot? I don't know if he's just resetting like way further forward than he needs to or... I can't see his backup lights so if he starts to back up, if he's getting rid of the back I won't know. Ah, too late. You've gone too far up. Yeah, see, bad backing habits is why you couldn't get it into that spot. All you had to do is just make a couple little steering habit corrections and it would have been fine. Alright, 11,460, only 20 pounds different from what we were before. We should be right below thirty-four thousand on the ten on the drives now. Yeah, we're definitely good there. Forty-four nine eighty. That's about thirty-three five now. So definitely made a difference. Should still get about 77,640-ish on the gross. Yeah, still 77,640. Okay, that's just under 33,000 on the tandem, so all right, we are good to go now. We have a totally legal load. No problems with uh, over length or overweight. So let's get out of here. Man, I'm still here there. Yeah, I'm hoping it's just leveling valve venting everything out when the brakes are released, because that's not such a big deal. It's it's one of those nuisance things, but it's not really going to put you out of service, necessarily. It's, uh, ideally you don't want to see it, though. At least not unless the uh, trailer um, has built-in uh, airbag deflation system on it when you set the brakes. Okay, I like to come all the way up here to where my, my door is right by the guard shack, because, uh, this, you can be you can be a bit of a line trying to get out of here, and it really helps with uh, trucks that are in queue um, being far enough forward so trucks that are just trying to pass through can. All right, guys, let's uh, go ahead and head up here and uh, send my departure info.
Looks like there's someone up there getting a parking ticket right now. And if I'm just here to do my, uh, just trying to get my uh, departure info sent before I head out of here, it shouldn't be a, yeah, I don't really, I doubt it will be a big deal there. And I can tell them I'm just here to send my departure info and nothing else. Alright guys, so I did mention there, I had reason to be suspicious that there was something else wrong here. And sure enough, there's something over here on the, the left rear area. I can't tell if it's an uh, auto inflate. It's either auto inflate, a tire, or a brake chamber. It kind of sounds like it's a brake chamber, but... Oh, it's this right here. What's that supposed to be hooked up to? Yeah, this, this fitting here is supposed to be hooked up to something. Where's this one hooked up at? It's by the front. Yeah. Goes up into that axle. So again, somebody caused that. Some mechanic did that. So what did I say about don't trust the damn mechanics work. I don't care how good they are, they can miss stuff like that. I'm gonna have to get that one looked at now, and I'm gonna have to go through the Cajon Pass way station get over there so my options are either go over to Ontario instead to get it fixed which is out of route which I don't want to do or go ahead and uh, head up there to my house and then maybe stop in Barstow or something along the way and uh, get that thing fixed um, it makes a big difference when you go into a way station if they catch it and you tell them, oh yeah, I'm aware of it. I can tell you exactly what it is. It's the fitting that goes up into that left rear axle. Okay, so they know that I was underneath there doing my pre-trip if I see that. Um, I went through the Cajon Pass way station before. All right, so anyway, yeah, I went through the Cajon Pass way station before with the trailer that I also drop hooked here. And it had a, a tire with steel cords showing on it and also had an air leak, but I knew about them leaving here, it's just, but I was going to get it fixed in Barstow, and I already, I already knew about it, and I knew I had a plan on how to get it fixed, so um, I go to the weigh station, and uh, now mind you, I was actually a little bit over length, and a little bit overweight on my dry, on my tandems, um, I was at 40 feet 6 inches, and still about 140 to 160 pounds overweight on my, on my tandems, Technically, I should have gotten a reworked, but I said, screw it, and uh, ran with it, decided uh, once I get past the Golden Pascal, it wasn't going to matter anyway, and I was trying to get to my sister's 50th birthday party as well, so I was uh, like, I had a motive to get up there, and um, so, I, you know, I go to the way station, and uh, the, the officer... As soon as I get through going over the scale, he tells me to stop and back up until uh, until uh, yeah, until he tells me to stop. So I go to the, I back up, and then again, when he tells me to stop, I notice my tandems are on the scale plate, and I'm thinking that my uh, I was thinking that he was going to get me for being overweight or something, but then he didn't even say anything at all about the weight or length issue. Uh, he didn't care at all about that. Um, didn't even say a word about it. Uh, what he had a problem with was the tire that I already knew about so when I uh, you know because he, he first you know he, there's an inspection lane right next to the scale he told me to go ahead and slide all over to, and then back into it and uh, he'd meet me over there so um, I do that and he comes out and takes a quick look and then he comes up to my door and says hey yeah the reason i pulled you over here to the side is because you have a tire so it's, uh, it's still uh, it's still cord showing and i go yeah it was the left uh, left rear inner right 
or left rear outer, whatever it was. These guys are idiots here. They can't handle uh, wait for see uh, three of them passing illegally right there. Fucking morons, impatient, and then they'll make illegal U-turns up here on uh, Rancho Avenue to try to to beat the uh, the red light. Anyway, yeah, so the fact I knew exactly which tire he was talking about, told him right then and there that um, I had to have definitely done my pre-trip to know which tire he was talking about at all. And, you know, yeah, he did ding me for a violation for, uh, um, you know, for the, for the tire problem, but, he, you know, and he could have put me out of service. But he told me, uh, yeah, because I already told him, uh, yeah, it's the left rear whatever, and I'll, or left, whatever was on the left side, uh, I think it was the left rear outer or inner. And I told him I was going to stop in Barstow to get it fixed. Because I just, I just hooked it loaded right here in Colton, so. Um, yeah, so he ended up, yeah, he would have just let me go. He told me just uh, go ahead and take it to Barstow, but don't go any further. And I said, like, all right, that's cool. And I think it also helped that it had Veteran on my CDL, too. So <laughs> that does tend to help. Yeah, it really helps more, though, knowing that, uh, hey, I, I know exactly what you found there before you even tell me what exactly it was. So not a problem there. It's, uh, you know, it's still their discretion. They can still put you out of service until it gets fixed. But uh, we'll see how it goes. Um, Either way, yeah, that's definitely going to need to get fixed uh, ASAP. So, yeah, I'll stop in Barstow on the way out of town and uh, get, it worked, uh, get it looked at there. Anyway, where are we going next? This one is going to the Walmart DC in Toma, Wisconsin. Now, I don't go there a hell of a lot. I've been there a few times, but not a lot. Um, Toma is, I actually went right through Toma, kind of on the way to uh, my customer in uh, Rochester, Minnesota the other day. Uh, Toma is right where I-90 and I-39 meet up. Or no, I, yeah, yeah it's I-90 and I-39, something like that. I think that's what it is. So that's, uh, that's where it's going to. A um, couple of route options because I can't use I-70 between the Utah line and Denver. So uh, one one option would be to take I-15 straight up to Salt Lake City and then uh, across Interstate 80 from there out to um, uh, some different options there. Uh, typically, I go out to Des Moines, Iowa, and then I'll take I-35 up to Albert Lee, Minnesota, which is where I picked up that last load from, and then I-90 across from there. Um, the other option, which is actually what my fuel solution is set up for, is to take I-40 across from Barstow. And, you know, some different options there, too. One might be I, uh, US-54 across from Tucumcari to Wichita, Kansas. Or, uh, or, you know, work your way up to uh, Emporia, Kansas and get on I-35 either in either of those cities than to take 35 up to Albert Lee. So I haven't decided yet which route, which of those two routes I'm going to take yet. Um, I do need to do weather planning. I figure I'll do that when I'm at the house because no matter what, I'm going to be, I'm going to stop by the house regardless. So, all right, that's all I got. Um, so that's what's going on here. Uh, I don't know that I'll be posting, uh, I'll, I don't know what I'll be vlogging uh, uh, Toma delivery, okay? So, I can't even guarantee I'll make it all the way there myself because I am running on recaps. Uh, there is a possibility they could have a concern about that. Uh, it just depends on what time the delivery gets scheduled for. Uh, it's due on, I think, the 13th of April. So that's what's up next. Uh, you'll either see a vlog from my, uh, either Toma or wherever I pick up from after Toma, which pretty good chance will be Belvedere, Illinois. All right, so... So, uh, y'all have a great day. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.